have your way. Speak to every heart. Challenge every life. Impact destinies. Heal sickness. Reveal Jesus. Stir, stir our heart this morning. name of Jesus will be glorified and the Lamb of God will be exalted we give you glory and have your way in Jesus name Amen 1 Samuel chapter 9 Samuel chapter number 9. Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abel, the son of Zerah, the son of Bekorah, the son of Ephi, the son of Benjamite, Oh, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. Verse number two, just keep going. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man, a goodly, some of your versions say a handsome young man. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders... From his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. Verse 3. And the donkeys of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with you, and arise and go seek the donkeys. And he passed through, through Mount Ephraim and passed through the land of Shalisha, but they found them not. Then he passed through the land of Shalem, and, they, uh, and there they were not. And he passed through the land of the Benjamites, but they found them not. And when they were come to the land of Zog, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come, let us return, lest my father leave caring for the donkeys and take thought for us. Our father is going to get bothered. You know, he will stop bothering about the donkeys. He's going to start bothering about us that we are lost or something happened to us. Verse, verse 6. And he said unto him, Behold now, there is in this city, that's the servant talking, there is in this city a, a man of God. And he is an honorable man. All that he said come surely, come surely to pass. Now let us go to him or go thither. Peradventure he shall show unto us, show us our way that we should go. He will tell us or show us the way to get the donkeys. Then Saul said to his servant, but behold, if we go, what shall we bring to the man? Because the custom was that you don't go see a man of God empty-handed. What shall we bring to him? For the bread is spent in our vessels and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? Verse 8. And the servant answered Saul again and said, Behold, I have here at hand the fourth part of a shekel of silver that will I give to the man of God to tell us our way. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Mm, hallelujah. Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus speak, Come and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. Then said Saul to his servant, Well said, come let us go. So they went on to the city where the man of God was. I'll read a little bit further. Just, just bear with me. And as I went up the hill to the city, they found a young, some young maidens going out to draw water and said unto them, Is the seer here? And they answered them and said, He is. Behold, he is before you. Make haste now. For he came today to the city, 
For there is a sacrifice of the people today in the high place or in the temple, in the altar. As soon as, the, as, as ye become into the city, you shall straightway find him before he go up to the high place to eat. For the people will not eat until he come. Because he doth bless the sacrifice and afterwards they eat that be bidden. Now therefore ye get up or get you up for about this time you shall find him. Keep going. And they went up into the city. When they were coming to the city, behold, Samuel came out against them for to go up to the high place. That's the prophet Samuel. He met them along the way. Now the Lord had told, listen to this, the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came saying, Tomorrow, about this time, I will send you a man out of the land of Benjamin and you shall anoint him to be captain or king over my people Israel that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people because their cry has come unto me. Verse 17. Reading a lot of scriptures. Now. This is good. And when Samuel saw Saul, you know, God had told him the previous day. So he saw Saul, and the Lord said unto him, Behold the man. Somebody said, Behold the man. Hallelujah. Behold the man whom I spake to thee of. This same shall reign over my people. That's the king right there. That's what he's saying. Verse 18. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray you, where the seer's house is. Remember now, Saul knows nothing about what the Lord told Samuel. He's looking for donkey. And Samuel answered and said, I am the seer. Ooh, I love that. I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place, for you shall eat with me today. And tomorrow I will let you go, and I will tell you all that is in your heart. Mighty God. Verse 20. And as for thy donkeys, they were lost three days ago. That were lost three days ago. Set not your mind on them, for they are found. Somebody say they are found. Say it like you mean it. Say they are found. And on whom is all the desire of Israel? He's talking to Saul. All the desire of Israel is on you. Is it not on you and on all your father's house? Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. And Saul answered and said, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm not I, am I not? This old English is, 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 is funny. I'm not I a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel and my family, the least of all the families. So, so he's saying, who am I? How am I going to do all this? What are you talking about? I just came from a little island. I just came from a little family. I just came from a little neighborhood. Who am I? What can I do? Look at my family. Look, we don't, we, you know, nobody knows us. The smallest of the tribes of Israel and my family, the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin. Wherefore then speakers, why do you talk to me like this? What is it? Verse 22. And Samuel took Saul and his servant and brought them into the parlor and made them sit in the chiefest place among them that were bidden, which were about 30 people, 30 people. Now we're about to round up. Yes. And Samuel said unto the cook, Bring the portion which I gave you, of which I said unto you, Set it by thee. And the cook took, you know, took up the shoulder, and that which was upon it, I don't know why the shoulder is the best part. That's just me. I don't know. But that's what they thought. And they said it before Saul, and Samuel said, Behold, that which is left. Said this, behold that which was kept for you, that which was preserved and prepared. Set it before you and eat. For unto this, unto this time had it been kept for you. So it was kept for you. You see that? He said this part like this was kept for you. Since I said I have invited the people. So Saul did eat with Samuel that day. Put us, we'll have like two verses. Let's just finish it. And when they were come down from the high place into the city, Samuel communed with Saul upon the top of the house. They had concrete top where people can spend the night there. And, and, and they arose early and it came to pass 
about the spring of the day. No, Samuel went to bed on top of the house. That Samuel called, or Saul, called to Saul the top of the house saying, Up that I may send thee away. And Saul arose, and they went out, both of them, he and Samuel abroad. The word of God is beautiful. Amen. The title of my message this morning is The Bigger Picture. Someone say The Bigger Picture. Come on, say The Bigger Picture. Listen to this. It, because I want you to notice something. While you're looking for God in dramatic happenings, in walls shaking, in angels flying into the room, or you having a dream and you see heaven in your bed, God is working in the day-to-day -day happenings of our lives. This is a natural, this is a natural family where the, the, the donkeys of the family are missing. Natural, normal day-to-day -day life. You have a bunch of donkeys and some are missing. And you call your son and say, hey, go out and look for the donkeys. There was nothing spiritual about that. Go out and accomplish this goal. Go out and be this. Go out and do this. Go out to Wichita Falls and go to MSU. Go out and get a job. Be a doctor. Be a pharmacist. Be a, a lawyer. Go out and be a psychologist. Go and be a teacher. Go out and do and accomplish something that seemed to be just natural. But in that natural accomplishment, while you are in the process of doing that, you have no idea that in that natural pursuit, God is busy trying to accomplish his will. That is why a lot of people, you get a job, you think it's just about the job. Because you think it's just me looking for the donkey. You don't know that the purpose of you looking for the donkey is so that you can enter your real life. Most people don't know that the job that I just got, that has, I mean, it was a six-figure salary. Man, what a job. What a job just coming out of school. What a job. All my dreams are going to be met. The things I've dreamt about, hallelujah. You know, you come to town and, 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 and you know, you're thinking, man, I don't even qualify to enter this program in school. All of a sudden, you, you get admitted. Amen? But, but you, may be, you may be tempted to think that it's just about that program. It's just about the donkey. Me, I'm looking for the donkey. You are focused on the donkey. But while you're focusing on the donkey, God is focusing on his purpose for your life. That's why I always tell people, wherever you find yourself at any given time, do not be limited by just the natural thing you're doing. Because in that natural thing, God is accomplishing his purpose. Hallelujah. Look at that. God has spoken to Samuel the prophet the day before. But Saul had no idea. He left the house in pursuit of donkeys. You have celebrated this morning. You have celebrated your achievement, which is wonderful. But you, some of you think it's just the accomplishment of the degree. What you don't understand is that in the accomplishment of that degree, God's purpose is coming through. Hallelujah. Come on, say somebody who accomplished God's purpose. I say you accomplish God's purpose. The degree is a stepping stone into your reality. It is not your reality in itself. It is a stepping stone into your reality. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, I say hallelujah. You know what I'm trying to do? You, if you're here, you know that. I'm checking my soft side. The side that receives better. That's why I'm going to focus. Amen. Amen. Saul is looking for donkey. God is looking for a king. You didn't hear me. I said Saul is looking for donkey. God is looking for a king. But in the pers the pursuit of donkey is going to meet up 
with the desire for a king. I say you accomplish the purpose for your life. I say you must accomplish God's will for your life in the name of Jesus. I'm talking to everybody, but especially the graduates. You must accomplish God's will for your life. Listen, you may think your life is just you. Man, I'm staying up all night studying. What kind of thing is this? You know, you set alarm, you're fighting to stay awake and go to sleep. You're adding 10 minutes to your time. Let me just sleep a little 10 minutes. And it felt like it was one minute you slept. <laughs> you know, you set, you set your alarm for 3 o'clock. As it goes off, you, you know, say just 3.30. As your hand is leaving it, it's already 3.30. That time does something to people. It does to me. Before my eyes close up, the 30 minutes is gone. Tell somebody it's not just about donkeys. It's about God's purpose. And I must fulfill it. So I must fulfill it by the grace of God. In the name of Jesus, it may seem as if we are just living our lives. But God is accomplishing His purposes. There's a big picture behind all of that. Amen? And my assignment this morning is to show you the big picture. To show you, to awaken you into the reality that it's not just the thing at hand. It is about God's big picture that's behind that. You may be doing business and the business is prospering. Hey, God is talking to you. You may have a job and the job is good. God is talking to you. You may be a student and you look, God is talking to you. You may just be strong, just around the neighborhood. God is talking to you. Because in your natural endeavors, God is looking to fulfill his purpose. That is why even when you, you struggle with the alarm, you think it's just you, but God is still struggling in that struggle to fulfill his purpose. That's why you never get discouraged. I said that's why you don't get discouraged. That is why you refuse to give up because you know no matter what I'm going through right now, the purposes of God will come to pass in my life. Even when things look like they're failing, they're falling apart, God is with you. You may not feel him. You may not even know that he's with you. But I'm telling you this morning, by the word of God, even when things don't look well, God is with you. Because he has a purpose for your life. He's with you to stir you up, to move you step by step until you fulfill that purpose. I say you will fulfill it. You will fulfill it. See, the deception of life is when you feel like the donkey is the goal. Mm. when you get to a point whereby you decide and settle that the donkey is the goal then you have, you have cheated yourself of the purpose of God are you listening to me when you settle and think that the job is the goal no, then you are, you are cheating yourself the job is not the goal the job is a platform God is giving somebody a bigger platform I said, God is giving somebody a bigger platform. God is giving somebody a bigger platform. I said, I see God expanding your platform. It's a platform. It's not the goal. It sets you up. So that you can meet your destiny. But what if you just end up with the donkey? You retrieve the donkey and that will be it. It may be a big old donkey. You may even eat it for Christmas. It may even help you carry things back and forth for business. But it's not God's purpose. It's not the fullness of the purpose of God. But a lot of people get caught with the donkey. Let's see how God traveled with them. You know, in the <laughs> Somebody said there's a big picture to my life. Hey, you think which that falls? There's nothing in this town. Man, what kind of town? Hey! It's the donkey. It's the donkey. It's the donkey. How come I find... I used to ask my wife, I used to say that. Man, what am I doing in this town? 
She will tell you that, you know, we just got married. I'm thinking, man, oh man. You know, because I want us in Oklahoma. You know, I finished school. I, I was working with this lady. She, you know, she was a multi-millionaire. She had, you know, I'm a counseling psychologist by practice. So I was working with her. She was sending me. She had several agencies sending me. And then she was like, man, I've been dreaming to work with somebody like you. You know, so I'm, I'm happy. Hey, you know, life is starting to, you know, I know that it is small, but I'm, I've entered, you know. So, she, you know, I, I told her, you know, I, my wife is in Wichita Falls. You know, she, and I'm planning to move. She's like, why don't you get her to come to town, you know? Tell her to move to town. What are you doing in Wichita Falls? But she was on contract here, so she could not move. So I kept, you know, I kept going back and forth, back and forth. And then, you know, when I was finally resigning and going to leave, man, she, she was like, you know, it was, it was not good. So I'm thinking in my heart, like, man, Wichita Falls. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, man, what is this? How can I live, you know, something that looks like it's going gonna, it's gonna to be promising and be moving to Wichita Falls? Then what is here? I'm thinking, what is in the place? But what I did not know was that it was the donkey. I say it was the donkey. Listen, where you are right now, you may be saying, what is this? I say it's the donkey. As you're going after it, God's purpose is following you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't get caught up with that. It's going to lead you into your reality. Tell somebody, I must leave my reality. So I must leave my reality. I must. Listen, you may even be doing business. It's prospering. Hey, hey, you may, you may get a job. You may have a connection somewhere and that connection is looking good. I say, it's still a donkey. The moment you see it as the goal, then you're, you're cheating yourself. You're cheating yourself. And it don't matter what the back we talked about last week, the background does not count. I say your background does not count. I almost say that again. I say your background does not count. Saul is trying to complain. Like, Man, I came from the smallest tribe. My father's house is the smallest house. What are you talking about? The man of God did not even answer that. Because God is not focused on the background you came from. He's not saying your family is not the most influential. You know, let's look for the one who is most famous and then we put them on the platform. No. No, God is not like that. I say your background don't count. You are accomplishing purpose in the name of Jesus. And then I found that in Wichita Falls, the donkey led me to here today. Well, I'm standing here today because of the donkey. Amen? <laughs> Trust me, if I didn't believe God, man, I would have struggled. That you got a job, there's a bigger picture for it. That you live in a particular neighborhood, there's a bigger picture for it. Oh, that you live in a certain apartment complex is a bigger picture for it. That you know a certain circumference of people, there's a bigger picture for it. But if you don't capture that picture, you miss out on God's purpose. But God is opening your eyes this morning as I'm talking. God is opening your heart. You're beginning to see where you are. That, oh, so in this job, you mean that I'm strategically positioned here for a purpose. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. At that job, it's a strategic positioning of God. Amen? I say it's a strategic positioning of God where you find yourself so that you can enter in into the fullness of your reality. I say you must enter in. In the name of Jesus. There's a bigger picture to you coming to MSU. That you have graduated and you're about to step out. There is a bigger picture to it. I want to, as, especially for the graduate, as you're stepping out, have that consciousness. That it's not just about the job. Listen, God don't have any problem giving you the job. That's not an issue with him. Amen? But in the job, what are you seeing? 
The moment your perspective changes like that, you become a candidate for God to use. God, he will handpick you and put you in prominent places just so that, just so that you can manifest him. Amen? And I see God doing that for you this season. In, as I see God doing that for you this season, in the name of Jesus, Kish was sending Saul out. God was sending Samuel his way. <laughs> Listen, what God would do this season, speaking prophetically to somebody, what God would do this season is strategic positioning. Somebody says strategic positioning. You will get a job, and it may even be the job that you initially thought it was not the one you wanted. Man, I feel like I got the wrong church. You, you may get a job that you think, man, why this one now? But it's strategic positioning. God is a strategist. It doesn't happen randomly. God is a strategist. He's positioning you there because he has seen the end. He has seen beyond that job. He knows exactly why you should be there. Because on a certain day, he has somebody who's going to show up. And you have to meet that person. Oh, hallelujah. I say hallelujah. God will strategically position in such a way that your life will fully manifest his eternal purposes. Amen. There is joy in graduating. There's joy in accomplishments. But there's bigger joy in fulfilling God's purpose. You know, that joy, that joy, when you fulfill, you, there is nothing compared to it. When you know that you know that you know this is God's purpose I'm fulfilling. It's not just me working. It's not just me making money. No, this is God's purpose I'm fulfilling. There's joy that cannot be compared to anything. Because that's the reason why you were created. You'll be living out your reality. Are you listening to me? Don't think it was just about having a job. No. It's not about the donkeys. It's about God's eternal plans. It's about... See, Saul had no clue. Oh, I love that. He had no clue. He had no clue that he was going to meet Saul, Samuel. He had no clue that there was anything connected to these donkeys. He had no clue. But God had that in his program. Amen? God had that in his blueprint. I say everything God has in his blueprint for your life will surely come to pass in the name of Jesus. Listen, it may take long, but it will surely come to pass. It will surely come to pass. I'm declaring this upon you this morning. Everything God has concerning your name will surely come to pass. The Bible said they passed through several lands, several different lands, different places. They didn't find the donkey. Not there. Some of you have been looking for a job. You move from place to place, put application here and there. From, or you move from job to job. And you're thinking your life is really messed up. But I can assure you this morning, your life is not messed up. Your life is moving closer to God's purpose. <laughs> Maybe you got fired somewhere. But in the firing was you moving closer to God's purpose. Listen, a child of God, if you understand that you are in Christ, and somebody says, we don't want you anymore, thank God for it. Listen to me. They, 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 they send a letter or they call you, you know, the, the, the CEO calls you in the office and I need to have a meeting with you. And you say, you know, we, you know how those says, you know, in, in a very tactful way, you know, we just, want, just go home for, for a while and when we need you, we'll call you. Just thank God because God has something better for you. I say God has something better for you. If that happens, it's a strategic move of God. And even if it is the wickedness of another person trying to do that. God will turn it around in such a way that it will work for your benefit. Amen? 
I said, we don't lose in Christ. I said, we don't lose in Christ. Come on now, in Christ, we don't lose. So I'm giving the first point. My first point here is the pursuit of life's goals. It is noble to pursue life's goals. It is noble to have goals in life to pursue. It is noble. It is a good thing to have goals to pursue, to accomplish, to want to accomplish dreams. It is wonderful because those dreams, first of all, they may be put in your heart by God. It's a noble thing to want to accomplish dreams and become the best. Amen? Man, I said the best. I just saw three people who are going to stand out in a big way. But I want all the graduates to claim this. But I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to do that because it's going to be like, you know. But I saw three people who stood out. You're going to be the best in your field. I said you'll be the best in your field. You'll be the best in your field. In the name of Jesus, God will multiply grace upon your life in such a way that you will stand out. In the name of Jesus. Listen, you are, you are pursuing goals. You want to be the best in what you do. You perfect your skills. You want to be the best. It's a good thing. But it's still a search of the donkeys. Hallelujah. He just got the donkeys. And there's nothing wrong with looking for donkeys. Like I said, it's a bigger picture. Life is not about donkeys. Hallelujah. The donkeys will lead you to the fullness of God for your life. Hallelujah. The second point is that God is for your success. God wants you to succeed. Maybe you've had experiences where you begin to suspect God. Like, man, you know, things are just, just not working for me. Things are not really happening for me. You know, why is this? Why is that? You have complaints. You have queries. Listen, God is for your success. Third John 2. Put me third John verse 2. Third John verse 2. God says, I wish above all things that you prosper. Look at that. God said, it's, it's above everything, my desire is for you to prosper. Somebody say, I'm prospering. Come on, say, I'm prospering. So I'm succeeding. So I'm making progress. So I'm, I'm <laughs> hallelujah. I'm breaking limits. Listen, beloved, beloved, I wish above all things. That you may prosper. Look at God's will for you. So there is no question. There is no doubt if God wants you to prosper or not. He said above all things, he wants you to prosper. If you see that, you say, Father, thank you. I'm prospering in your name. Hallelujah. That you pro And be in health. Because being in health is prosperity too. You would know that it's really prosperity when health is troubling you. And every other thing that's succeeding is all focused on the health. You know, the common thing is that you can't buy health with money. You better believe it. When everything about your life is focused on you being well, then you would know that health is really valuable. He said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. Somebody say, health is working in me. Divine health is working in me. Listen, I was meditating on the scripture this weekend, you know, in Romans chapter 8 verse 11. He said, if the spirit of him, ah, he said, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead. Somebody say, if. So it's a conditional statement. If the spirit Listen, do you know what it means to raise up Jesus from the dead? After he had carried the sin of the world and died and is in the tomb for three days dead. Hope is gone. Natural possibilities have faded away. And then the Bible said the Spirit of God entered. Listen, he said, if that spirit that raised up Jesus. I want you to really get this. The spirit of God raised up Jesus. So the body is dead for three days. But the spirit of God can still raise it up. And it came out alive. 
And he came out alive and was not handicapped. The Spirit of God released divine energy into that body. Someone said divine energy. You don't know that there's a spiritual electricity. You don't know that, right? The Bible says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You know, you're, you're the house of the Holy Spirit. Can a house be without electricity? It can be, but it will be in darkness. If you are God's house, it means God has a way of electrifying that house. Oh, hallelujah. The day I saw that, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. I said, there's electricity in this house. Divine energy. Divine, no wonder the woman the issue of blood. No wonder. No, she didn't even have to touch Jesus. She touched the cloth. But there was current in it. I'm building a consciousness in you. Have you ever touched naked wire? Like, well, you know, that's loose one. That has electricity. You will not even know they touched it because you'll you find that after. <laughs> well, I'm very suspicious of ironing, like pressing iron. I'm very suspicious. When I was little, I tried, I made a mistake. Plug the iron in and touch the bottom, see if it's hard to. I just, just tapped it to see. I found myself across the room. I mean, it lifted me. The thing had something loose that was loose in it. I didn't know. I mean, it hit me so hard. My muscles ached for days. Because there was electricity. That was loose. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. The woman, issue, she only touched the cloth. But electricity that entered the cloth. Somebody's touching Jesus this morning. And somebody's touching Jesus this morning. You are touching something. She only had to touch the cloth that had touched his body. Because the cloth became a conductor. Man, my physics is good. Hallelujah. Remember that stuff. But listen. And in, the Bible says she had suffered with the issue of blood for 12 years. Women can tell you that. 12 years bleeding. Not, there was no day of rest. There was not a day it's okay, let's, let's, the blood is resting today. No, 12 years. And then suddenly, the Bible says immediately, the blood dried up. As you are touching Jesus this morning, that situation is drying up. I say it's drying up. As you are touching, as you are touching him, I say it's drying up. In the name of Jesus. Immediately, 12 years disappeared. Amen. He said, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus is in you, that spirit that went to that dead body and energized it, and the body came out and stood up, he said, if, he said it is that same spirit that is in you. In other words, Things can be falling apart in your body. All you need to do is make contact with that spirit. It will bring it up. I said things are coming back alive. Things are coming back alive. Things are coming back alive. Dead things are coming alive. So the house is electrified. Come on, tell someone it's electrified. <laughs> That's why the Bible said, touch not my anointed, touch not. It's electrified. Is, there, there, is con there are consequences for touching. It's electrified. D there's a connection. <laughs> Hallelujah. But listen to that. God wants you to prosper and be in health. And then he said something else. Even as your soul prospers. So he wants the prosperity of your life, of your health, and of your soul. Prosperity of your soul, the mind is sound. The emotions are in order. You're not carried away by everything. You don't fall apart in your emotions. Your soul is not in darkness. Psychologists will understand this. 
The psychological part of you has been influenced by the Spirit of God. He said he wants that for you. Some of us are prospering on every side. In my spirit, I'm prospering. In my soul, I'm prospering. In my body, I'm prospering. That's God's will for you. He wants you to succeed. The donkeys will be found. Hallelujah. You will get the job. Oh, hallelujah. I said you will get the job. The business will prosper. The new door will open because God wants you to prosper. He wants you to succeed. Listen, don't, I'm going to say this. Don't listen to anybody who says God wants you to suffer to be a Christian. It's not in the Bible. That God wants you to really, you know, the more, so, I'm not saying that there's no suffering in life, in Christianity, because there's suffering in Christianity. When you want to live for God, is that kind of suffering. That one is godly suffering. When you want to live for God and there's opposition, now you're willing to suffer because you know it's for the, co the cause of God. Amen? Don't run away from that kind of suffering. Trust me. It's a blessing. I say it's a blessing. I say it's a blessing. They arrested the disciples and whooped them, flogged them. They said, don't ever again preach in the name of Jesus. They whipped them. Grown men, grown men, not students. A man who had a wife and children, they whipped them in public. And the Bible said they went home rejoicing that they were beaten for Jesus. Look at that. They went home rejoicing. They were happy. That kind of suffering is good. Amen? Not suffering that you cannot move from your house to school. I don't know how to do bus in this town. I know it's, it's free. It's free, right? If you were going to pay bus ticket, the kind of suffering, not the kind of suffering where you cannot pay bus ticket. That's not the counsel I'm talking about where, you know, everything is just, no. If you're suffering for God, then that's good. Amen? Say, God wants me to prosper. <laughs> Come on, say it like you mean it. God wants me, to, wants me to prosper. I see you're capturing that big picture this morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The third point. Life is more than personal pursuits. John chapter 17, verse 19. Jesus said, for their sake, for their sake, I have sanctified myself. For their sake. This is a difficult one for most people. Jesus said, for their sake, I have sanctified. In other words, I, I'm living the way I'm living because of them. So I can be a blessing for them. Do you know that if you're going to really make impact in Christianity, you have to live a certain way. Otherwise, your impact will be limited. That's a guilty response. <laughs> if you're really going to make impact, Jesus said, I set myself apart so that I can impact them. In other words, if I don't set myself apart from them, I cannot impact them. I'm just going to leave it there. I'll leave it there. You, you, uh, <laughs> he said, for their sake. Are you listening to that? So, my setting apart is so that I can imp have impact. I hear the Lord saying, for some people, some of you who graduated, He's going to give you one to two weeks of setting apart because He wants to talk to you. Are you listening to me? No, you didn't listen. One to two weeks of setting apart. You can take one week. Just be with God before you move forward. Amen? Amen? God wants to give you directions. And you're going to live from there with specific directions on what to do next. Amen? Specific directions on what to do next. He will talk to you in the name of Jesus. So God moves so beyond, beyond, beyond family business. <laughs> oh, he, he moved him beyond the donkey business. My question to you with that is that, have you found out where the search for donkey is leading you? Some people have. 
in that career, in that degree, you've already found out how you're going to serve God with that. You are moved beyond the donkey. Amen? I see you're moving beyond the donkey. The moment you say, hey, this degree like this, this is what I'm going to use it. This is how God's going to use me with this. You are moving beyond the donkey. Hallelujah. More than personal pursuits. Number five, your destiny is guaranteed. Say, my destiny is guaranteed. Say, my destiny is guaranteed. God told the prophet the day before that I'm sending you a man. I'm sending you a man that you will anoint to be king. As you're stepping out, as you're going about your business, God has already positioned people. God has already placed people for your destiny. God has already strategically positioned people for your destiny. And we pray this morning in the name of Jesus that whosoever is supposed to be a part of your destiny, may they show up at the right time. May they show up at the right time. May they show up at the right time in the name of Jesus. Listen, Samuel already got the word from God the day before. So a man is coming. The same thing with the prophet Elijah. God, listen, and, and the thing is that Elijah's own is very funny because God told the woman, the woman didn't even know God told her. Go to Elijah. I've kept a woman for you who is going to feed you. He said, go to Zarephath. I, I, I've, I've spoken to a woman. The woman did not know that God spoke to her. And the prophet showed up. The woman is picking to go cook food. Last food, last food, last food. And the prophet said, give me food. Cook for me, cook for me. And the woman said, it's last food though. We eat and die. So in other words, she did not know that God spoke to her. But she was just in her day-to-day. You didn't get that. So in that day-to-day, you may think you're just doing your own thing. But that your day-to-day is a response to what God told you. But you did not know it. Ah. Say my future is guaranteed. God already spoke. The word of God already went ahead of you. I said the word for your success already went ahead of you. The word for your victory already went ahead of you. Your success is guaranteed. I want you to live with that kind of mindset. See, you're not stepping out to fail. If you're in this, I'm not talking just to the graduates. You are not moving in life to fail. God's word has gone ahead of you. I said there are positionings concerning you. People have been strategically positioned. Wake up to that awareness. You will see it begin to work. God said, as Saul so showed up, God spoke to the, to the prophet and said, that's him. That's him. If, so, if Samuel was not a prophet, she may not have, he may not have heard God speak that that's him. But he would have just said, this man looked like he's the man. But because he was a prophet, he could interpret that. I said, okay, God is talking. Amen? Oh, my God. God will talk to some of you so much this season. Listen, listen. He will talk so much. You know why? Because he's going to try to keep you from going astray. He will talk so much. He may, you may not hear his voice, but he will talk to you as you are taking the actions. With the consciousness that is with you. You are stepping out. You are taking action. God will be in them. Be confident. Be confident. Be confident that he's with you. He said, hey, I'm with you always. Amen? I say you can never fail. Listen to me. I say, I know, I mean, I know this may sound strange for some Christian. You never heard, you heard this. Uh, never fail. I say you can never fail. I'm going to say that again. I say, I say you are not made to fail. You know, do you know who you are? You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Jesus already won the battle. Failure is erased. Oh. I said failure is erased. Come on, Sam is success. You are not just succeeding, you are a success. In a, it don't matter if what you're doing is small. You are succeeding in it. And you're going higher. You're getting bigger. You're getting stronger. In the name of Jesus. 
my six point. I'm way out of time. <laughs> I know this, it, it, this sounds like the same, but it's not the same. Your success is guaranteed, means you're going to get it. But number six, your success is now. <laughs> ah, I say my success is now. I'm not planning to succeed. I'm already a success now. Say, I've already succeeded right now. Listen to me. I've already succeeded right now. You, people of God don't wait for things to look well before they declare they are succeeding. They know that in Christ they're already a success. If you stay in the boat and wait for the water to calm down, you retire in the boat. The water would never calm down. You didn't hear what I said. The storms of life will never give way for you. Listen, life is for aggressive people. Professionals can tell you that. Professionals, I'm talking about natural. Isn't that true? Life is for aggressive people. If you decide that, oh, you know, now I'm gradually, I'm going to be sleeping, watching, I'm not going to call the show. Why just waiting for, for the blessings of God to come my way? I'm going to just fold my and watch TV. <laughs> you watch TV for a very long time. And you know all the shows and what time they come on. You got to be aggressive. Amen? And why are you aggressive? Because you know that you know that you know that he has won the victory for you. When things look to be overcoming you, you refuse. You refuse that you cannot be overcome. Why? Because Jesus has won the victory. Hallelujah. Listen, if you don't step out of the boat, you will never walk on water. You will repeat that story all you want. It will not become your story. It will end in your memory. You imagine the 11 were in there. The 11, they're watching Peter that he's lost his mind. How can both be going like this and you're coming out of it? All Peter needed was Jesus to say, come. And he has already spoken to you. If he did not speak to you before, you just heard the word right now. I see you just heard it. Hallelujah. I say you are stepping on every storm. You're walking on every troubled water and it will not drown you. In the name of Jesus. See, my success is now. Why am I saying that? The prophet said to, to him when he, when he finally met him, he said, the donkeys are already found. He had not seen the donkeys. But the word of God already said, they're already found. Now look at this. Saul would have said, what found? Where? Where? I can't find any donkey trapped. Show me the donkeys first. Did you hear him say that? No, talk to me. Did you hear him say that? He just believed the word. The word said the donkeys are found. Somebody need to get that. The word says the donkeys are found. The word says the job is available. The, the word says the business is calling you. The job says your next level is calling your name. The job says the next partner is waiting for you. The, the word says the connection is already available. The donkeys are found. In other words, what you're spending your life looking for, the word of God already gave it to you. Ah, I felt that in my heart. What you are running after all over the place, the word of God already handed it. Say the donkeys are found. Say my success is now. Say my success is now. Say, so my success is now. And then my, my, my next point, I'm living the bigger picture. I say, you're living the bigger picture. I say, you're living the bigger picture. You're living the, you're not just living in the natural thing that you're in. You're living the bigger reality of that. Listen to this. Once they went past the donkeys, and they came to Samuel, Saul entered into a place of his true reality. He never, he thought he was just a handsome man on the outside. Because the Bible described him like that. But he thought that was all about him. And then the moment he realized that 
is not about the donkey. Because so, somebody told him, remove your mind from the donkeys. They are found. Now focus on what I'm going to tell you. Are you seeing that? They went past the donkey before they could find their reality. The, if, you, if you remain focusing on the donkey, you will never enter the next level. The donkey needs to usher you. Amen? And the man of God said, come with me. He spoke to the cook. He said, get the meat that was prepared for him. Prepared for who? I thought I was just looking for donkeys. So you mean in all this, my going back and forth, in my own life, in my own struggles, something had been prepared for me? Ah. <laughs> he said, bring the meat, the, the choice part. Not any kind of part. The choice part that has been kept for him. I said the choice part is kept for you. I said the choice part is kept for you. Not any kind of part. The choice part has your name on it. Listen. Let me make something practical here. If you're stepping out looking for a job, this is what I'm going to tell you. If the job of your dream does not show up, get the one that shows up. Ah, I'm going to give practical wisdom. Step into it. Step into it and own it while you're looking for the next one. Because you just step on one platform and it's better to be on the one platform than to be here. Ah, uh, somebody said, I'm waiting for that big break, so I'm going to just wait. That is not my level. No, 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 no. No. Take it. And while you're in it, you're declaring the word of God. I'm the head, I'm not the tail. <laughs> I'm above, I'm not beneath. I'm a champion in this life. I'm overcoming every challenge. I'm... Listen, before you know it, before you know it, Hallelujah. Somebody may take that little job and remain there. For you, it's a step. I say it's a step. Don't, don't be too, listen to me. Don't say, I'm going to wait for Warren Buffett to call me. I had somebody who always said that. They said, I need to meet Warren Buffett. They did their business papers and showed me. Say, pray for me. I have to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with him. I said, not bad. It's not bad at all. I said, what are you doing now? What's the small business that you're doing? Don't, you want to sleep and wait for Ryan Buffett? You'll be in your 80s. And you've not met him. Let me not call Ryan Buffett. Let me call the financial powerhouse in this place. Listen to me. In a few years, there are people in this house that people will be looking to meet. <laughs> in a few, in a few years, in a few, people will be looking to meet you. We'll be looking to meet you. But I told him, I said, look, just do what you have to do now. Why are you engaging Warren Buffett? He, he, he thought I, I, was, I, was, I was reducing his faith. I said, okay. Till today, he hasn't met Warren Buffett. He hasn't done anything. It's been several years. Don't have that kind of illusion. Live your day to day. In that day to day, you are entering divine reality. Let me round up. Let me round up. We're done. Uh, so I'm leaving the big picture. Once you realize that you are more than just the job, that you are the light of the world, not just that you are the light of the world, not just the job, everything will begin to turn around. Your job will become a catapult, a catalyst to catapult you into your reality. And then Samuel said to him, I'm going to tell you everything that is in your heart. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you everything that is in your heart. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, says, eyes have not seen, neither have ears heard, nor has he entered the heart of man the thing God has prepared for you. The choice part has been prepared for you. You're going to eat it in this season. I say you eat it in this season. The choice part is yours. The choice part is yours. The choice part is yours. In the name of Jesus. And then Saul left that place. The man came looking for donkeys. He went back as the king of the nation. Listen to me. It is bigger than the donkey. It's bigger than the job. If you, you end at the donkey, you will never be king. If you realize that the donkeys are ushering you into the, into the greatness of God for your life, they will gladly, the donkey will gladly usher you in into your divine reality. I see great people beyond measure in this place. And I'm, I'm not saying that because I want to just say, you know, people are represented by, you know, a sea and water. I see water overflowing. I see water overflowing. Stand on your feet this morning. I see water overflowing. I see greatness, 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 greatness on every side. Greatness on every side. Oh, the donkeys, the donkeys ushered a man into, into becoming a king, into a throne. Usher the man into his throne. I want you to raise up your voice this morning. Say, Father, I thank you for the donkeys. I thank you for the job. I thank you for the business. I thank you for the ideas. I thank you, Lord, for the things you are putting in my heart. But I also know, I also know that beyond these things, your real purpose is behind them. You are giving me, you are making me financially powerful so that your purpose can be realized. There must always be that connection. You are making me, you are making me influential so that I can impact people for your name. You are making you are making me stand out so that you can lift up my voice so people can listen to me when I talk about you. Come on, open your mouth and pray. Pray to God this morning. Hallelujah. It's not just about what you have at hand. It's not, listen, I've pushed some of you. I know I've pushed some of you further. It's not just about the job. The job is a platform. If you begin to see it like that, God will begin to open your mind to know what you can use that job to do. Come on, talk. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Pray, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We bless your name this morning. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your grace. Saul went out for the donkeys. And he came back, the king of the nation. God is lifting up somebody this morning. Somebody's been lifted. Somebody's been lifted into their reality. You have been lifted into your reality. You have been lifted into your place of greatness in God. You're being lifted into your place of impact. You're being lifted. You're being moved forward. You're being moved beyond, beyond, beyond. Be you are a man, a woman of impact. No wonder Jesus said, You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You need your light to shine. You are the light of the world. Come on, thank him this morning. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the donkeys. I thank you for the job. I thank you for the business. In the name of... Let's pray like this. Let's pray like this. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the donkeys. Thank you for my job. Thank you for the job I'm about to get. Thank you for the business you've given me. Thank you for the ideas you're putting in my heart. I receive them with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Just declare. So I receive that job. I receive those ideas. I receive that business. I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive. As I thank you for the job. I thank you for bigger jobs. I thank you for greater exploits. I thank you for next level, for bigger dimensions. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for bigger openings, for open doors, for favor. In the name of Jesus. But we we'll also pray like this. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, make my reality known to me. Listen, I'm, I'm pray we're praying because we're praying beyond the job. We're praying beyond the business to enter into that fullness. Say, Father, open my eyes. Open my eyes 
to see that reality. Enable me to enter into that reality. Stir up my heart so I can take hold of that reality in the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Hey, that job God is giving you is connected to something. That business is connected to something. It is connected to something. Your eyes, if your eyes are not open, you will never see that connection. It is connected to something. Maybe, just maybe, you became a director in that company because there's a certain CEO that's going to visit that job one day that you're about to talk to him and God is going to use you to impact that life. I'm telling you, God is concerned about one life. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you this morning. Let your grace be multiplied in every life. In every life in every life. Let it be a new day. Say it's a new day for me. Say it's a new day for me. So I'm entering a new dimension. The dimension beyond the donkeys. The dimension beyond the donkeys. I'm entering into that fullness, into that reality for my life in the name of Jesus. Raise up your hands. Thank him this morning. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him this morning. Father, we give you praise. <laughs> we give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We bless your name. We bless your name. Take one more minute. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Yes, Lord. Let's just sing that as we round up. Hallelujah. Abundance of blessings. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I've taken over. Thank you, Lord. I've taken over. We give you glory, Lord. Just take one minute to thank you. It can mean something. Say, Father, thank you. Maybe you've never heard anything like this. Say, Father, thank you. May this be a reality in my life. In my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for these people. Every word we've spoken, let the grace that came with that word be made manifest. Let in every area... Let it be a performance. Let it be a showing. Let it be a manifestation of your reality. In the name of Jesus. Lord, the reason for our being, may it manifest. That particular reason why you made us. May we live it. May we live that reality. That the name of Jesus will be glorified. In the name of Jesus. I'm a righteous man. My mind is sound. My body is healthy. My future is bright. And it's glorious. So I'm a righteous man. My mind is sound. My body's healthy. My future is bright and glorious. One more time, I'm a righteous man. My mind is sound. My body's healthy. And my future is bright and it's glorious. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. And it's, I'm living beyond the donkeys. Amen. Thank you. You are blessed. This week is blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, everybody, for being here this morning. Please don't rush out. We want to celebrate with our graduates. With